Hey, welcome back. <clears throat> part two, part two <laughs> of the Frankie Slauson versus myself answer you guys' questions. And we're on part two of this edition. And I'm going to kick it off with a question that I was asked on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook. Uh, even on Facebook, people have questions. Uh, this guy, he uh, his name's Brandon Jett, and he actually, uh, well, he wanted to ask this on YouTube, but he, he decided to ask me on Facebook, so I told him I'd answer this uh, when I made my next video. And the question is, see, he said, I meant to ask a question, but forgot to go back and do it. It was going to be, are you interested in making films too? And if so, why haven't you? And if you tried, how did it go? It's like, well, the thing is, and I kind of, you know, I had a chat with this guy, uh, with Brandon a little bit, and I, I told him, I said, yes, I am, you know, I would definitely be interested in making some films, actual film films. Uh, I've talked about this with, uh, with Brendan too, uh, as far as, uh, uh, making a, a film, doing something like a collab. Like next time he ever did like a Night Owls movie or a little short film, that I would be more than happy to to play a little role in. It. You know, you don't have to pay me. I mean, I do it for free. I mean, more likely it'd be a free movie anyway. You know, or or even if a cool dude ever wanted like me to do something for with him or whatever, or or us like you know everybody's been talking about you know wet movie and cooler and myself doing a movie together doing something together god i would love that that would be excellent you know the only problem is over here in minnesota you know that's where i am see they're lucky they live in california they you know they live where you know it's easy to to get a job you know little film jobs here and there but with with us with me right here in minnesota so that's in northwest of minnesota right now because i'm have no income really right now uh it's it's hard for me to actually, uh, you know, I, there are some people around here that that are kind of into film too, but it's hard to get people together, and it would be fun if I knew somebody, even locally around here, who would love to do something, you know, love to do a short film. I got a camera. It's probably not the best camera in the world, but it works, you know. And I'm sure you know for a lot of these short films that shot MJ or shot and. And MJ or even you know what movie have done and Gabe have done are are used from a flip camera or even a more professional camera. So I know they got more than just the flip cameras. So why haven't I made one yet? Because I'm, I'm I'm hoping that sooner or later I'll find somebody that's actually interested in making a film with me from around here. Uh, so there you go, then Brandon. Hopefully that answers your question. And I want to let people know you guys can continue to subscribe because very soon I, we were going to do a show tonight, but I'm not too sure yet because I, you know, after this video goes, I have to go and and uh, I have to uh, I have to go and mow a yard or whatever after I make this video, so I don't know if I'll be back in time. But I guess you'll know. I I put a thing on there for the for us or whatever that we do a show tonight, but we're not, I'm not too sure yet if we will. If we don't do one tonight, then I'm probably going to do one either tomorrow or Saturday, for sure. Because uh, I think it's supposed to rain out here one night uh, on that. But let me get to my channel here. Let me get to my videos here. Uh, so I can continue answering some questions. I, I appreciate everybody's feedback <coughs> to the uh, last video that I made. Uh, to the video I made posted on Monday. Uh, which had to do with everybody's questions that they had to ask. Uh, or that I answered so far and I know I kind of maybe pissed off a couple people but you know hey it just goes with the territory I guess sometimes you can't always make everybody happy I guess even if you try <laughs> but uh, yeah so yes let's continue now, I gotta remember where I was here <clears throat> let's see because it's just a few questions see I want to I want to answer all these questions but you know I know that it's going to take me a long time to get to these so I think uh, I think this will probably be my last part as far as answering all the questions that I choose to answer because there's there's a section here for the guy by the name of and I will tell you his name the collector fan who actually asked me 40 believe it or not 40 different questions that are all like really short short answer questions 
but that I know I can probably in one one video I can probably answer every single question in, in, in a good length of time or whatnot. So the next video that you see will either be a review, a movie review that I of a movie I just recently watched, or or it will be uh, one or the other anyway. Uh, it's either gonna be a movie review that I uh, a review of a movie that I just recently watched, or or a movie or or uh, answer these questions. Or vice versa, but that'll be the next thing. So this will be my last part as far as uh, answering you guys' questions. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to answer all of them, but but there's some here that are just too nasty. Okay, so let's continue on here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it says this is from the Faustian man. I, I know that guy from New York. Let's see. It says, name your favorite band from the 90s. And who would win in a three-way fight between Goku, Superman, and Popeye? Hmm. So name your favorite band from the 90s. Well, my favorite band, I mean, there's a lot of them, I guess, you know. I mean, but I'm, I'm more old school, you know. I like, believe it or not, I like Buddy Holly and the Crickets and Del Shannon and, you know, and Roy Orbison and whatnot. But, you know, I also like a lot. I pretty much like pretty much a little bit of everything. But uh, favorite band from the nineties, I probably have to say, well, probably Pearl Jam, because they, you know, they they kind of, they, I mean, there were a lot of bands that really high, made the nineties what they are, or made them really special and whatnot. But I think Pearl Jam uh, is definitely uh, one that I would definitely choose, just because I I really like their music. I'm not a huge fan of their music, but I but I like a lot of their older stuff, a lot of the newer stuff. I don't really get into. But Marler, because I, I I still have their Versus album, which is one of my favorite albums that they ever came out with, and because uh, it just has a lot of songs that people know, and 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 I, even though I'm not really into the hits all the time, I'm more into deep tracks and whatnot. But you know, it depends on what the song is, I guess that I like. But yeah, so I'd say Pearl Jam for sure. Uh, let's see, and then who would win in the three-way fight between Goku or Gaku or Superman and Popeye? Well, I've never heard of Gaku or Guku or whoever that is. Uh, probably some Pokemon crap, probably, huh? <laughs> I don't follow that Pokemon or, or anime anime crap. I, that's not cartoons. But I, I, I'd have to say it'd probably be a tie between Superman and Popeye. But I suppose if you really want a winner, I suppose I'd have to say Superman just because he has superhuman strength. Popeye, he gets strength, but, also, but he only gets it when he eats spinach. Superman has more powers than that. Plus, I think he still has X-ray vision, I believe, too, so... I'd have to say Superman. Okay, next question here. Who is this is from Corey Brown Reviews? Uh, who is the most, your your pick on the hottest actress ever? Well, I don't know. I would have to say probably. Well, I don't even know. I mean, I, I guess I'll say Kelly LeBrock. Just because, you know, I love weird science and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, I know now she's like, what, 50 years old or whatever now. but Because uh, I know a lot of people would say Julie Roberts or Farrah Fawcett or all these. I'm just going to pick randomly and just say Kelly LeBrock. Just because I, I thought she was really hot in weird science and whatnot. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, I don't really watch a whole lot of female uh, actresses. I mean, I, I do. But they're, but they're ones that you probably wouldn't consider, consider too hot or whatever. Uh, like, I like Roseanne, you know, a lot of people would probably be like, oh, great, my boner just went down there. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, like, Roseanne, I always liked, uh, I, I also liked uh, Patricia Richardson, who played, uh, uh, Jill, Jill, uh, Taylor in, uh, Home Improvement. You know, she, to me, she's always been pretty funny, and, uh. And then uh, Rebecca Donaldson, Lori Laughlin, you know, who played Rebecca Donaldson in Full House. Always loved that her, too. Uh, so I thought she was pretty good looking as well. So hopefully that answers your question there, Corey. Uh, let's see. What else can I say? Okay. Now this one is from Film Addict 1983, a.k.a. Stephen. Uh, Stephen Carl. And uh, he actually, uh, well, you know, he actually ha has asked some questions here that... Uh, I want to, that I will answer. Uh, he said, the first question, does anyone else in your family look like a pro, pro, 
Probius or Probiscus Probiscus monkey? Probiscus monkey? Well, I don't know what a Probiscus monkey is, but but uh, I'd have to say no. Okay. Uh, why number two? Why do you want to work in radio when you can't speak English properly or pronounce a lot of words? Oh, oh, so funny there, Stephen. Oh boy, I've never even heard you ever speak any words or ever say anything, let alone make any videos on your channel. You know, I know we've talked about that before already, but uh, it seems like a lot of people agree with uh, some of these questions. They well, at least fourteen people liked what you what you wrote anyway. Uh, English properly? Well, hey, you know. I do the best that I can, you know. I've always said, you know, with the with my radio voice, it always it took me a little while to get used to it, because I had to establish a voice before I even, you know, had a voice. And what I mean is that I've always been nasally, okay. And I'll be honest, for those of you who don't know much about me, yes, I was born with a cleft palate. What's a cleft palate, you may ask? Well, it's where you have a hole in the roof of your mouth, and all the air. That normally goes through your mouth or whatever, goes through your nose or whatever else. Hence, sounding a little nasally. Now, it used to be really bad back when I was a little kid, you know, before I had braces and stuff like that. And if I would have had all the surgeries that I've had when I was little, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was told that I wasn't able to talk till I was like four years old or whatever. And it was hard for, even then for me to pronounce words or whatnot. So, I don't know. Uh, now I just can't. I don't know when to shut up, you know, so I don't know. But once I started doing radio, when we used to uh, like, uh, when we used to uh, do like, uh, what does I say? We used to do, well, let's see, like tape, like no, I, uh, tape checks or whatever, audio checks or whatever. You know, we we uh, we uh, air che air check air check tapes, and we listen to ourselves after our broadcast or whatever, and. You know, I didn't really like how I sounded. I thought it sounded pretty horrible. But, but then after a while, I just got used to it. And people that started listening to me when I had my own show and all that stuff, hence the Frankie Slauson show. Yes, I did have my own show at one time. Uh, that went well, that went for about three years, by the way. Just so you guys know, for those who don't think that I could ever do radio or whatever. Three years to have your own show to kind of do whatever you want. Plus interview over 35 different celebrities. Uh, or, or guests or whatever, other than just regular people, I think that's pretty, uh, uh, quite the accomplishment, I would say. Anyway, so it just took a little while to get used to that. You know, I didn't like how I sound. Even today, I still think that when I hear myself, that's not the way I sound when I, when I hear myself. But, eh, whatever, I guess. Okay, so, let's see. Uh, Okay. And then, how can you justify asking for handouts when you have a place to stay for free, over 500 movies, and free food to eat? Well, I will correct you on that one, first of all. I actually have over 1,000 movies. <laughs> and free food to eat? Free food? No, 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 that's not free food. Now, I might get EBT and all that stuff, but that's only because it's based on, you know, you know that the fact that I'm low income. If I start to make money again... I probably, you know, I'll have to pay for it myself. You know, yes, the government pays for it for right now. So technically it is kind of free, but technically it's not. And plus I still help my folks out, you know, ever since I moved back here, I've been trying to help them out, you know, uh, by doing a little extra charge for them or whatnot so that, you know, it looks like I'm actually, you know, helping out and, and not just being a freeloader or whatever. Uh, and then uh, place to stay for free. Yeah, okay, I do have a place to stay for free. I don't have to pay rent. But in, in a sense, I'm kind of helping my family out with my EBT card, you know, here and there. Uh, just because uh, it's just, you know, the, the best thing I think I could do. Like I said, I am helping out a little bit, you know, the best that I know how, you know, until something comes up or whatever. So anyway, let's see. Oh, let's see. So many different things to ask here. I think most of these questions I've asked answered already. Let's see. Okay, here's one. What is your most favorite '80s horror movie? And please give the Philly Movie Guy a shout out. Well, there you go, Philly Movie Guy. How's it going? <laughs> go subscribe to the Philly Movie Guy. Okay. 
Let's see. Favorite 80, 80s horror movie? I'd have to say the Fre uh, Freddy. The Freddy Krueger stuff. Because I have the box set. And I do have uh, the Jason and everything else. But I'd have to say the Freddy Krueger box set uh, of all time. Because you can't... You know, Robert Englund's the guy, the man. You can't replace him for anything. I did watch the remake of that. And I was still kind of disappointed. Even if you guys remember the radio show that I did with the blind dog Scotty Gilbert and Glenn Braggett. The Tuesday Night Experiment. Uh which I'll talk about next, because I know that somebody actually had a question about that, too, uh, about Tuesday Night Experiment. That'll be the last question I answered in this Q&A, short little Q&A series. Uh, no, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, I, I didn't really care for the remake, because, it you know, you can't really replace uh, Robert England. They tried to. The story was amazing. The story of the new one was just great. But the, the this guy who they had play player uh, Robert Englund was just it's like come on like Robert Englund could do one more final you know Freddy Krueger role you know I mean they could just they didn't even have to make it a remake they could just make it like uh, like a part like another just another you know like he's back you know one last time or whatever kind of like how they did with Freddy vs. Jason kind of you know even though I think Freddy should have won but whatever so there you go. I hope that answers your question. And once again, go sub to Philly Movie Guy. And there's a shout out for you. Okay, so the last one. Now, somebody, well, okay. Okay, somebody actually asked me the last question that I'm going to uh, answer for right now. Sorry if I didn't answer all you guys' questions. I gotta see how much time I got here. Oh, I got ten minutes. Sorry if I didn't answer all you guys' questions, but uh, just that I didn't want to make this too long. I just want to answer the questions that I feel are really important because some of these questions that I were asked are kind of, you know, stuff that you know I just don't want to answer right now because of the fact that I just uh, you know either I've answered them already or or. Yeah, but Mr. Riley eight eight five eight asked a question. Explain what happened with the Tuesday Night Experiment, and why you why you no longer do it. Now this is a question that I've been wanting to, to actually answer for a while, because even in my situation here, and and I'm not going to name the name of you know what or who who got rid of me or whatnot or how it all kind of happened, but. I will explain why I'm no longer there. Okay. For those of you who follow me here on YouTube know that ever since November 2nd, from pretty much November 2nd, Tuesday, November 2nd, 2010, to about fr uh, Tuesday, April 18th, no, April 19th, 2011, I was a part of a group on the radio, I uh, Pioneer Night Pro 1, called the Tuesday Night Experiment. And it was a show based on pop culture a show that the host the guy who you know who I you know who I've had a little uh, a feud with for a while or whatever but then we kind of met we, we kind of you know apologized for both our actions and made up or whatever and just you know just started being friends again uh he asked me to be part of his show because he says he has a good idea where he and I can do something together and make it great and you know, make it something that's never been heard, heard before or never been done before before uh, on the radio, and I said that's fine. I'll just let me know when you need me and what you need, and I'll I'll be there for you. Well, it turns out that this guy's ego really started to grow. It didn't take too long for me to figure it out either, uh, because he was really uh, the type of person who feels like like the radio station can't uh, can't uh, exist without him, and I don't think that was right. I don't think uh, I don't think that was right at all as far as. Uh, uh, him actually not being fair to us, you know, even though he was the one that said, "If you guys got any ideas, you know, let me hear them, and we'll and we'll work with you. I'll work with you on them." And I had a lot of good ideas that he never once really wanted to work with. You know, it was all about him. It was never about us. You know, Blind Dog Scotty Gilbert and I together alone could do a better radio show than than the guy who hosts the show, the guy who invited us, uh, and actually still be fair and let us all do. Because this is pretty much what would happen. When we get like an interview or whatever, the guy who would host the show would uh, 
pretty much, you know, it'd be his time to talk even more. And all Blind Dog and I would do was just sit back and listen, you know, to the person who was on. And sometimes these interviews had no time limit. So, you know, we would actually not be able to play any legal IDs or anything like that like we were supposed to because, you know, the guy's interview just lasted way too long. And he didn't care. It's like, hey, you know, he's in control or whatever. It's his show. He can do whatever he wants. But if we would have uh, missed a legal ID or something like that, we probably would have been kicked off or whatever. You know, the thing is, it's still a real radio station no matter how you look at it. And we're still supposed to be as professional as we can. But when your ego gets too damn big for your bridges, well, then there's a problem. So I, I pretty much is, you know, what happened was to me, uh, I... I'm going to let that phone ring. I don't, I'm not going to answer it, whoever it is. Uh, what happened with, with why I officially left the show was because, okay, Blind Dog, was you know, he was supposed to be on the show, you know, pretty much as a regular, just like I am. And he couldn't make it uh, that, that Tuesday, April 19th or whatever. He couldn't make it to the show. So what happened was that he said he had to go to Grand Forks because, uh, he was going with you know another friend of mine to Grand Forks, and he wasn't sure if he's going to be back in time. And I said, okay, just make sure you let the host know, so that he knows that you're not going to be there, because I think I could even you know you know the host and I could host do a show together, no big deal. But anyway, so we did a show, or we did, or well, we didn't even do a show, we just find out that you know Blind Dog, you know his schedule kind of was off a little bit, so he he wasn't able to you know he he called the host, like a half an hour before the show started, and uh, let him know that he was going to be there, and said he would just do a phone-in. Well, what happened was that the host of the show got mad at me, because I, he's, he was blaming me, because since I knew about it, you know, that he wasn't going to be there, he thought that it was it, I was supposed to let him know, let the host know, you know, just to give a heads up. And, and the thing is, I did let him know, like a few hours before the show was supposed to start. You know, but he got all pissy and moaning and all that about me and everything. He just, I don't know. And 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 the thing is, I mean, I'm not trying to start no fight with this guy or whatever. I, the, the simple matter of the fact is that I'm not going to do any more work with this guy. It, not, not in the future or anything else. I'm sure he might find this, you know, and play this on his show. And that's fine. But I want people to know the real truth. You know, I'm not saying his name because, you know... I'm, I'm being smart. I'm not going to say the name of who who I could easily say, and he knows who he is. He knows that he, he owes me a big apology as far as uh, just to let me leave like that. I walked out, not because I really wanted to, but because I, I felt like I was, you know, I'm sick and tired of being pushed around when I thought this guy was supposed to, he, he said he he said he's always uh, stepped up for me, stood up for me and all that. And, and come to find out, if that would have been true, then you wouldn't have uh, just let me leave like that, you know. You wouldn't have blamed me for Blind Dog not being there, uh, you know, not being able to show up. I mean, it's not like it was the biggest deal in the world. And we've showed up for every other episode that we've had, and this first time that one of us was missing. So I just said, I finally just had it. I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with the Tuesday night experiment. I don't want to leave. I really would rather just stay, stick around and be a part of the show because I, I like it. I like being on the radio. But I'm not going to put up with anybody's bullcrap as far as uh, an ego. He claims that he doesn't have an ego, but I know he does. And even Blind Dog knows he does. Now, they're trying to find a, a, another person to replace me, but so far, they, as far as I know, they haven't done it yet. Of course, I haven't listened to the last couple episodes, so I don't know if they have or not. But the thing is, it'll never be the same now that I'm not there no more. It's just gonna, and I told Blind Dog, you know, give it time. The host is going to... The host is going to do the same thing to you, too, as he did to me. Just give it time. It doesn't matter how, how long you know each other. I've known him for about eight years or whatever, and he still did this to me. He felt like I was never going to be able to host my own show again. So, you know, and he said that, you know, I would never... Like, he's earned the right to do all this stuff. Well, I have, too, because I, I was on the station just as much as... Almost as, as long as he was. And I, and I busted my butt and cut my teeth... So just to get to the top of the mountain as well. But I never once got any respect for it as far as for the people that I should be getting respect from. He never once ever, you know, said that, you know, like apologized to me for anything. Every time I ever had to apologize, it was always my fault. Like it was never his fault. So 
That's why we're never gonna work together again, and that's the real reason why the Tuesday night, why I left the Tuesday night experiment on Tuesday, April nineteenth, two thousand eleven. So there you go. <laughs> Hopefully that will answer all the questions for you guys. Sorry I didn't answer everything, but uh, we're gonna be making a separate video answering. Uh, Who's that guy's name now? The film collector? Let's see. I think, yeah, the collector fan. I'll be making a video based on uh, answering all you guys' questions, or your questions here in the next one, or after my movie review. So, I'm Frank Slauson. I better go answer the phone. So, we'll see you guys next time, and thank you once again for sending in your questions. I hope I made everybody happy. Bye-bye.